Heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for the living. Make a better place for you and for me. Hey everybody, it's Lady Cheryl here. Just showing you a view from my front porch. We have a lot of rain. We've been getting hit really, really hard. Standing water here again. So now I'm standing in my patio door and I just want to give you a little quick overview of how hard this rain is coming down. And I'm not complaining, guys, because, you know, it doesn't make any sense to complain. This is no joke. Ooh, look at those sunflowers. Opened up since my last live. Beautiful, beautiful. A lot of rain. So here is a steel picture of the area right at my front door. Uh, but I'm really blessed. The 30 years that I've been living in my home, we've never had any water to flood inside. So it's a blessing. Twice during the spring, I clean out my freezer and I make what is called dump stew. I take a lot of vegetables that I have frozen, you know, during the fall and late summer, and I make soup out of it. And here you can see I'm beginning the process of pressure canning it. I have to pressure can it because it contains chicken, the quarts for 19 minutes, and pints for 75 minutes. Now, you can go back and look at my canning playlist, and you will see a lot of videos about how to pressure can. So, I don't have the time to get into that this morning, but I want to share with you this is a way that you can preserve your harvest these are meals in a jar you can just open up the jar heat and serve if you want to cook some rice and pour the stew over the rice you can do that or mashed potatoes whatever you decide to do all you have to do is heat it and serve it okay I don't want to make redundant videos, so because I have a lot of videos on canning soup and stews and meat, uh, I'm sure you will find something in my playlist. Also, I do give individual Zoom classes on pressure canning. You can go to my website, LadyCherylsProducts.com, drop me an email, and I will set up a training class for you. So this is what the stew looks like, and you can see little small slivers of white chicken breast, skinless, boneless, and various vegetables, like I said, that I put into my freezer. You can add whatever you want in your soup. I have garlic in here, jalapeno peppers, red pepper flakes, a lot of black pepper. I don't add any salt whatsoever because of my high blood pressure, but if you add a lot of herbs and spices a little turmeric is in here i have parsley little basil just put whatever you like in your soup okay and it tastes really really good okay all right just thought i'd share well as you can see it stopped raining and i'm out in the greenhouse and i thought i would come out and harvest some tomatoes this is a, a manna orange See a couple that are almost ripe. It's been a rough season. Those are beautiful. But you have to just take what you can get. So I'm going to come out every day and harvest the ones that are ripening and let them continue to ripe on my windowsill. Been a rough year because of all of the rain so i'm gonna get that one right there and i'll be there back. a lot of beautiful large tomatoes on the vine and a lot of blooms unfortunately most of them are not going to make but i have another opportunity in the fall to grow more tomatoes 
and I need to be careful out here because it's real slick on these wet bricks. So I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna give you some facts. And the high point in this greenhouse frame is seven feet. So some of these tomatoes are seven feet tall. So I'm being real careful and I'm gonna go back in the house and I'll give you some tomato facts about all of these blooms that you're looking at. Okay. So some of these tomato plants are seven feet tall outside of the greenhouse. The next few weeks, it will determine how much the harvest uh, will be, if it'll be plentiful or not. And that's all gonna be determined by the weather. Now let's give you some pearls from Lady Cheryl. The optimum daytime growing temperature for growing tomatoes is between 70 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. But you guys know we always try to push the boundaries, the limits, and we put our tomatoes outside uh, when the temperatures weren't steadily at 70 to 85 degrees. In fact, we have some days where the temperature dropped down to 39 degrees, okay? But as long as it didn't drop before 30, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, they survived, okay? But now, after our rainy period in North Texas, then we go into our drought and our higher temperatures with a higher heat index. So we're going to start getting temperatures above 90 degrees. And that is not the optimal temperature range to grow tomatoes. So let me share with you what happens when the temperature rises during the daytime above 85 degrees, this will cause your tomato blooms to abort. The plant will abort the flowers. Now, you can try to hold on to them by shading them, putting a fan on them, and, you know, try to hang on all through the summer. And then when the fall comes and the temperatures drop down a little bit lower than 90 degrees, they'll start blooming again. Personally, I like to just start over. I used to clone them, and I find that those cloned tomatoes don't do as well as tomatoes that I start from seeds all over again. So that's what I do. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying I have very good results. Those of you that live in my gardening zone, when I start my seeds, I'll give you a heads up, and I'll take you with me every step of the way as I start germinating the seeds for my fall and early winter garden. The tomatoes are looking better, not as many blemishes as the previous harvest, and they're going to get better and better. Am I looking for perfection? No. Ain't no perfect gardening. Everything is not going to be beautiful. But just from my experience, if I can harvest these before they start getting indentations and splitting because of excessive rain, they will... Um, look and do better so that's another reason why i like to harvest them a little bit sooner because they don't lose the sweetness as i told you in many videos tomatoes are one of the through fruits through fruits try saying that fast <laughs> that you can harvest early and it still will be sweet as they ripen indoors so this is my favorite part of the canning process I love to see them out of the canner and to see that they are still boiling when I sit them on top of a cutting board or a towel. And uh, yeah, they look great. I won't check them until 24 hours. I'll leave these covered with a towel undisturbed for 24 hours. And then I would take the rings off, wash them off, date them, and put them in my pantry, of course. When I take the rings off, I will pick them up by the lid and make sure that they have sealed. Okay? All right. Dish towel on top of them just to make sure that all of the excess water has uh, been absorbed in the towel. And also it helps to uh, facilitate sealing as well. 
I plant a lot of flowers throughout my food forest, but you're looking at some beautiful zinnias that I put in my prayer garden in March. And I also planted some herbs. And right here, you're looking at the monarch butterfly worm or caterpillar. I also uh, plant a lot of milkweed around my food forest, but it hasn't bloomed yet. But I know that the monarch butterfly will lay their eggs on the undersized tender milkweed leaves. But anyway, it takes about 25 days from, for a monarch butterfly to metamorphose from an egg to an adult. So it's going to be happening pretty soon, and I hope I can capture that for you. I'm just going to leave it alone in its natural habitat, and hopefully, like I said, I'll be able to share it with you because they'll start when they're they'll start when they're about to reach maturity they will hang themselves upside down and you'll see I'll be bringing that to you I've seen it before but I've never captured it all uh, stages of it on film but I'm going to really try this year and here's a picture of the monarch butterfly hopefully I'll be able to share um, if it's a male or a female I think this one is a female thank you so much for watching this video if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I love you, and God loves you too. Bye now. See you real soon.